Hey there, welcome back to another tutorial on how to do animation in TV Paint Animation Pro. My name is Sean and I'm from P2 Studios. Today we're going to be working on an extension of our last tutorial on how to use the FX stack or the FX animation presets in Animation Pro. So to start off with, like last time, we're going to go ahead and create a black background so that our visual effects can be seen more readily. So to do this, all we do is we go down to our background. We can go ahead and rename this. It's a really good idea to rename these layers so that when you get multiple layers, you can keep them organized. So I went ahead and just put BG for background. And I selected OK. And then we just go down here to the background and I'm gonna pull this out where these are this um, layer area with keys where we can take and adjust the span of this keyframe. So the bottom one here, I just go ahead and grab onto this bottom uh, square and click and hold and we can drag it out. And I'm gonna drag it out for about two seconds worth. So we can get a really good loop on our visual effects and we can see it better. So since we're animating at 24 frames per second, I'm gonna go ahead and put this keyframe all the way out to 48. So that way we get at least two seconds worth of animation for our loop. So since we have it all the way out to 48, I'm gonna go ahead and color my background. And to do this, we just go up here in our main panel bin. And this tool right here is our flood fill tool. And you can go ahead and select that and make sure that this box, this is your main picker color box. Make sure that this is on black. If not, you can come down here and you can click and drag this to the black. And since that's already on the black, we're just gonna go ahead and click on our main stage. As you can see, my background has turned to black. So now we move on to adding a, a type of effects in our stage. And today I believe we're gonna do a explosion, which is very useful for many different types of projects. So I'm just gonna go show you a little bit of an overview on how this is done. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. So I'm just gonna collect new again, and this time we're just gonna name it FX Explosion. Okay, and um, we're just gonna go ahead in the presets, we're just gonna um, go ahead and select none. And this is the type of animation, and our blending mode is color. We can have different types of blending modes especially if you're um, having multiple layers and you're gonna have this on top. You can do like multiply or overlay. Uh, it all depends upon what your project's needs are. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave this on color and we're gonna push okay. So now we got a new layer above the old one and I wanna push it out to 48 like I did the um, background layer so that we can see that it has at least two seconds worth of animation. As you can see, the timeline right here is a little stretched out um, to make it a little more um, effective in our workflow. We can shrink this timeline. We can also expand it. And the way to do this is there's a little tiny button right here on our timeline. It's called Z. And you just go ahead and click on that and hold it down. And if you move your mouse button left or right, you can see it shrinks up or it expands our timeline. So I'm just going to shrink it up a little bit so I can see also the bottom layer here. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the square again here on the bottom right. And we're just going to drag that out as well up to 48. And it should match with our bottom layer here, as you can see. So we're on frame 48, and this is frame 1. <clears throat> so to like last week all you had to do is either go up here to our toolbar and where it says FX 
we can go ahead and use this or you can go up to here to the menu option where it says effects and you can select either multiple or single <clears throat> for today's lesson you can choose either one um, it doesn't matter if you want to add more than just one effect to the to the um, layer you can so we're gonna go down and we're gonna select rendering and under rendering there is one called particle generator <clears throat> so go ahead and select this and before you select this you want to make sure that your layer that you're creating your visual effects on is selected and to do this you just click on this white box here as you can see you can click on this and it'll, it'll select this layer and all your FX will be applied to this layer but we want to keep this as our background because it might be the background to your animation project as well so we're just going to go ahead and reselect the FX explosion and over here you can see our FX stack box or uh, menu um, I think they refer to it as a bin um, so we have the particle generator here we got the world emitters and and we got emitters none okay you can you can go to a point create a point a line ellipse or a rectangle but that's for more of a blank emitter where you're gonna input your own um, your own picture or your own particle um, for today, we're just going to use a preset. So we go over here to the FX bin and we can go to a preset by we can browse. And if we hit browse, um, it'll show us um, an example of whatever is selected up here, which is a prefix cartoon country. And then we can go down and we can go down here and select explosion if we want to. And we can see the explosion here the type of explosions and if that's not a type that we need for our project we can go ahead and just keep choosing to see just an example of what each one is and they're all different some have more uh, debris some have more um, fire preset to it um, and that can all be changed as well we can um, toggle with the emitter so that we can tailor our explosion to what we need for our project. So as you can see, there's like a lot of different presets for this, but the problem is here is that we can't see most of it because it's a white background and explosions tend to be more brighter unless it does have smoke or it has different types of debris that come, comes out from it, for like example. And this is good for like smoke trails, like um, having having different um, burning effects. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this out. And we're going to go over here to the FX bin and we're just going to go to preset. And then we're going to go pyrotechnic. And we're just going to go ahead and choose explosion B. So as you can see, I can't see nothing in my window right now. so. Um, we're going to go ahead and activate the HUD and the HUD shows us that this is where our, our explosion emitter is. It's the green square right here. Uh, to drag this we just go ahead and click on the green square and we can place it in the middle or on the bottom or wherever you need it in your project. And this square on the left hand side here, this is the emitter array. This is when the emitter spits out explosions or spits out dust or spits out the debris. It will spit it out from wherever within this line radius. And you can adjust it so you can have the direction going only in one direction. As you can see, it only goes out in this direction. Or you can take and move your angle all the way to a 365 degree angle and it'll explode out from the middle and just irradiate the whole area. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, go ahead and take the HUD off and you just go ahead and play that explosion. As you can see it, it looks pretty good for um, maybe a tiny explosion but personally I like bigger explosions. 
Um, <laughs> I don't know who doesn't. Um, so we're just going to go to, um, we have our different particles. Uh, we have the number, the size. We can increase the size. These are the, um, of the particle generator. We can just pump this up to 300 and it will increase the size radius of our explosion. And as you can see, it's bigger. And like I said, it also depends upon what your project needs are, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pump that up to 500% and we can rewind this and see what it looks like. And see, it's a very big explosion. And the reason why it slows down a little bit is because this is actually rendering in real time. And once we render it out, it will go ahead and it'll be a lot smoother. We can also move this around as well. Um, we just take the HUD, the, the center point, and we can click it off. It's very hard to find the HUD, or the center point without the HUD, as you can see. You're, you try to move it around, it's like, oh, where is it? You gotta find the exact middle of this particle generator to be able to move it around. So again, we can push play and see how that does. And as you can see, after the explosion, the cloud kind of just like dissipates and it's not like really like a wow factor for your explosion. So we're gonna go ahead and fix this. What we do is we go to the particles itself and we can pump up, we can do, um, we can go under the number. There's different types, like I reviewed last week, there's different um, different settings we can have for each of the particles. And under here where it says particles light, this is the light that's emitted by the, by the generator, the explosion. As you can see in the beginning right here, this, this area right there, rewind that this is the light part that is emitted through the emitter and this is the light particles the the different types of settings that we have for this specific particle we have the size the velocity the weight the balance the friction the opacity and the motion um, they're all presets you can go ahead and play with these I highly recommend you to play with them because it will allow you to learn this a little bit faster, which is always good. Um, this is also a shape. Um, the shape is from the file. The file, um, the shape that's it's emitting is from a reference file that is in your pre your presets. As you can see, it's like a cotton. They call it cotton because it looks like a ball of cotton. And then we have the different types of blending modes that we have with it. We have animation, you know, you can do randoms, you can um, do different, a random loop, you know, you can go ahead and randomize it. So that way it's not the same, exact same thing every time it goes in the loop. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and, um, and just put none. And then our blending mode, you can, like I said, you can create um, overlays, multiply. This is just like the blending modes that you guys have in Photoshop for anyone who uses Photoshop. And then we have our color source. Our color source is just a regular color. We can also have a gradient, set up a gradient. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead and show you, also you can affect the other two types of particles that go with this effect. And the other two type particles is smoke. And as you can see, when we select smoke, all the options come up for this particular particle. And the smoke, I like to, when, when an explosion happens, generally the smoke heads up. So you can do this by just going ahead and affecting the gravity of smoke. And to do that, we can, um, Go to, let's see, velocity. Oh, we can put the weight down. Let's go ahead and see how that works. Okay. 
And see, this is where it comes in where you get to play around with it and you get to see how it affects your particle generator. And um, usually with a smoke, it has, um, it has a different weight and a size. It also is supposed to have the gravity that is affected by it. Oh, here we go, gravity. So the gravity here we can set up to, I'd say about 12. And when we do that, you can see that it goes up. Let's decrease the, the size so that it plays back in real time a little bit faster. So we're gonna go ahead and go under the particles, go under the light. And actually, I think it's under world, emitters, explosions, and size. size. I'm just going to put this back down to 200% so that way we can see how the preview works a little bit faster. So as you can see when I play it, the smoke now goes up a little bit faster and we can keep changing this a little bit more. We can um, put the gravity even up even further and when we play it back you can see that the smoke now rises upwards. So it gives us more of a realistic view of our particles and the explosion. And then you can, when you go ahead and you can take and add this to your layers, all you have to do is you come down here, you apply it on the current layer because you want it on this explosion layer. Then the selection is all instances or just whatever is selected. Um, I'm just gonna put all instances and all instances is just every single key or every frame and in the frames um, just apply on frames and then you just go down here and you apply on the FX stack and as you can see it's applying this to our frames and our timeline and once it's done you'll see that it has a, indeed applied every single frame a different particle so that it could as you can see it starts out as nothing and we can scrub through this. <clears throat> and as you can see, it applies the full visual effects to our layer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so if we want to add another effects on top of this, we can. To do that, we just go ahead and add a new layer. And I'm just going to call this FX2. And again, I'm going to keep the same default settings. <clears throat> and again, we want to stretch this out to 48 to match our other frame. And as you can see in our preset that I just selected, I selected it so it's above the current layer. So we have our FX here and then our FX2 here. So these will match the lower frame. So I'm just going to try a different FX on here. And so to do this, I'm just going to go to the FX bin. As you can see, the FX stack is still open, the, the window, the um, menu. And you can see that we still have our layer selected. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this to um, the preset. And I'm just going to go ahead and choose something different. Um, we're going to go ahead and do like, let's try a fireball. And as you can see, we can't see anything on the stage unless we push play and we can see the fire, the, the current explosion we had. And so we're just going to go ahead and rewind it back to our first frame. And we're just going to select fireball. And then we want to put the HUD on here so we can see what we're, what we're adding to our stage. And we're gonna select preview. So now we can see where our emitter is. <clears throat> if we can't see the fireball um, 
we can go ahead and put the frame ahead a couple of frames. You can do this by either selecting this button here where it goes to the next key, or you could take and use this button where it can fast forward it, or you can just go ahead and scrub it to see where the center of the explosion is. So we're gonna head and move that key right to the center of ex the explosion, just like that. Now what we could do is so that we don't we don't have the explosion kind of drowning out the emitter so we can see what the emitter is doing. We can go down here to the layers and under our our previous explosion, we can where it has this eye on our timeline, we can select by clicking on this green um, this green little circle and it'll turn red, which will not allow us to see what's the um, that particular layer, what the effects are, or whatever the image is. So we're going to go back up here and make sure this is selected. And we're going to play through this. And as you can see, the fireball is um, kind of just sitting. And it's actually pretty cool. We're going to take the HUD away. I'm just going to go ahead and play this to show you what it looks like. <clears throat> and the so this looks pretty cool as it is, but I'm going to go ahead and mess with the um, settings a little bit, see if we can get it pump, punch it up a little bit. So we have the particle here. This is the heat. The heat is the, the developing orange and red and yellows as it's burning. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to, I'm going to change the see the opacity let's go ahead and change the the size of it so we're going to punch this up to 300 and now we hit play and you can see it's bigger now this would be cool for like before the explosion happens like if something's burning or something's getting hotter so i kind of like that and we're going to take and I'm going to take the bottom layer. I'm going to apply this to this specific layer before I change the bottom layer. So I'm just going to go ahead down here and apply to the FX stack. And as you can see, it still has all of our current or the default um, selections for our frame. And this is from the last time we applied it. So just make sure this is exactly what you need or if you need to just apply it on a selection which is just a whatever selected. So I'm going to apply it. And as you can see, it applies it. And we're going to scrub through this and show you what it looks like. As you can see, it, it's a really well done generated burn effect. And so like I said, I really like to have this as the beginning starting point of our explosion. Like if it gets really, really, really red hot and then suddenly from there it explodes. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and select this red um, circle here again. And this time I'm going to select all these frames down here. Make sure that we have selected this layer. And I'm going to just, to do select the layers, all you do is you click below the frame. Like, and then you just go ahead and drag you just kind of drag up and drag to the left or you can drag to the right depending on where you are and it highlights all of these frames now as you can see our our top frame is at 48 so I'm going to overlap this last frame so I'm going to drag this bottom it's a little bit touchy so I'm gonna, it says move so I'm going to move this all the way down to the frame 48. So now that this f explosion layer will start on, on frame 48 on its first frame. So if we go ahead and rewind this and play it back, you see it gets hotter and then poof, explodes. And so there's many, many different ways that you can use this. Um, there's many different types of pre um, presets that you can use you can add different as you can see this 
um, it said add, add FX. Um, we did select multiple, so you can always go into the bin and you can always do um, create more FX and add it upon this layer. Um, you can try different things. And, you know, like I said, just keep playing around with this, the best way to learn with it. Um, so we can go ahead and close this out. And this concludes our tutorial for today on how to use the FX stack for the explosions and the heat core, as I would put it, the heat core. And it turned out pretty well. So go ahead, like I said, keep practicing, keep playing around with this. It's really fun. Um, keep playing with the settings, adjusting the gravity, the velocity. Um, you can even adjust the winds so that it blows the smoke trail to the right or the left. And as you can see, this can be applied to your project or anything that you need. And um, so we're gonna go ahead and conclude this tutorial. Uh, next time we can go ahead and keep trying out more of the um, FX, but I think by now you can see that how easy it is to add a visual effects to our layers and create different layers just by going to our FX selection panel and just going to our FX bin and presets. Like I said, you can go ahead and add your own just by changing the emitters. You can um, create a new emitter and you can create a new point in that point with a particle. You can go ahead and choose a new particle and just, you know, keep playing around with it. Keep trying it out, experiment with it. And you'll find that it turns out to be either a really awesome, cool mistake, or you can just delete it. So until next time, um, like I said, keep practicing and have fun.